So we're back again in Indiana, and what is happening? What is cooling? I hope you're having a good day. I'm cooling. It's freezing, man. Oh my gosh, it's cold. I woke up last night, and I'm like, oh my gosh, it's 50 degrees in here. Gotta get all the blankets out, but anyway, stop complaining, G-Sling. It's time to get right into the video where we're gonna go mock the mock, and we're gonna be talking about the mock draft with Mike Renner, or Michael Renner, the robot, the- But gosh golly gee, man, Aiden Hutchinson is a wrecker out there, and you've seen that explosion, the power that he has. It's unbelievable, man. Aiden Hutchinson is twitched up, and he is ready to go, and he is the number one overall pick here for the Detroit Lions. The big thing I will say, and that I'm going through, because I'm looking at the Detroit Lions and their season so far, I don't think Edge is their biggest need. I do think it's a need for the future. Trey Flowers, that contract situation, got like a 12 mil cap hit if they were to let him go. It's five years or five million next year if they let him go next season. Um, nonetheless, Aiden Hutchinson, he is probably, him and Kayvon Thibodeau are the best players available. It's like, did Troy, do you just take the best player available? Do you consider trading down? Do you just take a quarterback at number one overall? I know people say, well, there's no quarterback prospects worth the number one overall pick. I disagree, actually. Nonetheless, that's, you know, a difference of opinions. I think the quarterback class is also being, you know, taken down because of last year and such the hype and whatnot. And defenses have adjusted too. Remember, last year was a COVID year. Defenses weren't as much available. So I think quarterbacks were thriving even more than they were this year because of that too. Defenses weren't as strong as they were this year. Defenses have bounced back in a major way on college and in the NFL. So that's something that I think people don't talk about in general is that it's been tougher on a lot of these quarterbacks this year. Overall, going back to this pick in the Detroit Lions, it's, you know, if you're just taking best available, Aiden Hutchinson, if you're looking for the best needs and how to build this team right now to get this team ready to go in the next season or two to be a playoff contending team, I think you got to look at quarterback, you got to look at receiver, address that offense. And also, I think guard position is kind of an underrated area to look at too, to, to really, re, you know, make this offensive line a huge strength and a top five level offensive line, because they really could be a, a top five level offensive line in the next season or so. If they were to get a good guard, they've got their tackles, they've got their center, they just need maybe one more guard next to Jonah Jackson. And this offensive line could be a powerhouse unit that, you know, legit could be a top three, top five offensive line. So there's different ways to look at it. We'll talk about it tomorrow with the Detroit Lions. I just want to give you a sneak peek on that. Aiden Hutchinson is a good pick. Let's go on to the Jacksonville Jaguars now who are selecting Kayvon Thibodeau, the other man, of course. And it's it's the vanilla versus strawberry flavor. How Kayvon Thibodeau executes the ghost rush. What? The ghost rush? That's like, oh, that's a new pass rush. I thought it was a swim. I don't know, but that's the ghost rush. That's what they're calling it. Getting another pass rusher next to Jonathan Allen. They are giving up on Kayvon Chase on, but it is admitting they need to get another. They have to opposing quarterbacks better. Thibodeau is that man. The athletic prospect and ideal explosiveness, length, and blend combination. To excel on the edge, absolutely agree. And you just take the best available player. This is another spot with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Edge isn't their biggest need. I think they need to address offense and receiver really, really bad. Do you trade down and look to go out and get a Garrett Wilson or whatever, or Jamison Williams, whoever you're high on, because that is such a big area of need, is getting some more reliable pass catchers for Trevor Lawrence and to help him out, man, because the drops are bad. They're really bad, man. It's I'm telling you, I've seen every game from Trevor Lawrence. He's made some mistakes. His accuracy isn't there. Maybe his pocket presence at times, but it's not all on Trevor Lawrence. They need to get some help. <laughs> on to the Houston Texans, and it's the golden ticket. Kenny Pickett, the quarterback out of Pittsburgh, is off the board. <laughs> the fake slide. Yeah, we got to look at that fake slide, man. It's oh, That was such a great... It, yeah, it's going to be talked about now from here and until the draft, of course, and you see him a little boop, and then pow, and he's gone into the end zone there. <laughs> Anyway, Kenny Pickett, I think, has definitely worked his way into this conversation. Still early for me. I, if I was Houston, I would not take a quarterback. And this is why. You look at their roster. And you always talk about this as putting your quarterback in a good enough situation where they can show you that they can be the franchise and they can show you enough. And Houston, do they have the talent surrounding Kenny Pickett to be able to really show that? Unless Kenny Pickett is the next coming of... I don't know. Like it's just, I think it's gonna be very hard for Kenny Pickett to be able to come into this offense and really thrive. And you've seen Deshaun Watson even with this team only being able to win four, you know, games and whatnot. I just don't think it's ideal for uh, the Houston Texans to go after a quarterback, trade down, uh, trade Deshaun Watson, get as much draft pick. Call the Giants because they've got two top ten picks. You can trade with them, go get their two first rounders have three first rounders in, in the first top 10 picks and help rebuild your roster, take a quarterback next year. This is a team that needs to rebuild. 
I don't think they're in as good of a situation as a team like Detroit to take a quarterback. So I'd actually flip the picks, you know, something like that. I don't know. That's kind of my opinion on it. On to New York Jets. We're going big Evan Neal, where I'm rocking with this one. I have no problem with this one at all. Jets go back into the trenches. Morgan Moses, I like him a lot. Whether or not he's back, that's something we'll have to kind of wait and see with the offseason, you know, with all that murmur and things like that. But Evan Neal, you can't go wrong solidifying that offensive line. I think George Fant's really good too. But he can be a great swing tackle, as you've seen Mekhi Becton get injured and injured over and over, unfortunately, so far. Evan Neal can swing to left and right. You roll from there. New York Jets back on the clock. We see a plethora of picks here. Derek Stingley Jr. is going to be the pick here for the Jets via the Seattle pick. Don't have, This is what I made in my mock draft. He's copying me. Come on, Mike Renner. He's the... I don't know. Maybe he had this out before me. I don't know. Because I did my mock draft yesterday. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. But it is what it is. Derek Stingley Jr., though. The corner out of LSU. And I'm super pumped about this one. He's my favorite player in the draft for the Jets. I, am, I really want them to get Derek Stingley. I believe he's a true number one corner. I've said it too many times. The Giants going with George Karloff, this big George, going to the New York Giants here with their first pick from Chicago. This is one of those where go ahead and approve that edge rusher. He's a good complimentary dude as well to Zizo Jolari. It makes a lot of sense. And Lawrence Taylor get and say, hey, we got to get back to some vibes. Some, where's the, you know, where's the fierceness and the fear coming from the Giants? There is no fear right now. They need that pass rushing duo back. Get it with Big George. I have no problem with this pickup. Uh, you know, need more pass rush help, I think, is a big area. Now the Giants on the clock as well. Going to Charles Cross, an interesting one. Mike Renner must be very high on Charles Cross, which I, I do like Charles Cross a ton. He's got him as a top 10 picks, number 7 overall. Definitely, definitely an interesting one. He had a great game versus Alabama team. And uh, yeah, absolutely. You see him here. Uh, going up against a great pass rusher. You know, we know Will Anderson in this Alabama company this time going up against 47 there. I mean, he look, Charles Cross is really, really good. He's a very, very good player. And I think that as the combine goes around and they see his testing numbers, he could definitely rise up. The big question is, do you move Andrew Thomas to right tackle? Do you move Charles Cross over to right tackle? That's going to be a good question there. So uh, it is how you fit. Someone's going to have to move over at some point. So you can kind of work that all out. But Charles Croc gonna, Cross going to be the pick there. On to the Atlanta Falcons going Kyle Hamilton. And this is one I thought about yesterday as well. Kyle Hamilton. It's almost like, look, they got the Kyle Pitts of last year. Because, dude, that's what Kyle Hamilton is. He's like that rare, unique prospect, that unicorn that Kyle Pitts was. So it's like they're going with back-to-back -back unicorns this year. And, you know, Kyle Hamilton, what he can do onto defense with his size and his speed combination that he has is you see, oh, my God. <laughs> dude, you cannot. Dude, there are not many people that can do that. That is Earl Thomas level of range. That is unbelievable. Atlanta do need more help in the secondary. Jalen Hawkins has been a good rotational piece, and I think he can continue to be a good rotational piece. Richie Grant's been playing a lot in the slot this year. Maybe he does move up top next season. We'll have to wait and see how that rolls out. But Kyle Hamilton, he's not going to take away from that role by any means. On to the Carolina Panthers now, going with Matt Corral, the quarterback here. And Matt Corral, of course, has had a monster season. And he's starting to look healthy again here. We'll see how he does in the bowl game. But Matt, if he plays in the bowl game, I don't know. I haven't looked at the news and see if he's going to be playing. But Matt Corral has been very good. Carolina Panthers need a quarterback. Still disappointed they let Joe Brady go. That came out of nowhere, man. But obviously, he's going to be looking for a job somewhere else. And you get Matt Corral, though, on here for the Carolina Panthers. Still looking for a Cam Newton replacement, man. Sam Darnold hasn't worked out. On to the Minnesota Vikings going tr Trayvon Walker at number 10. Holy cow. Oh, my goodness. I didn't expect that one at all from Mike Renner. Trayvon Walker, he does have elite tools and elite traits. At 10 overall, though, the production isn't quite there. This is a Rashawn Gary-like pick. And if you're looking for that day one impact, Trevon Walker may not be that sort of guy. Now, if you're looking for the future, like a Rashawn Gary sort of, you know, has excelled. And I think Trevon Walker will get there and be an elite level player at some point. It's just a matter of, do you have the patience to wait? And the Minnesota Vikings maybe do have that ability to sit here and wait. It just kind of depends. At 10 overall, it is interesting though. Six foot five, 275 pounds and getting this physical edge rusher off the edge. On to New Orleans Saints, Jamison Williams. This is the pick I had the other day. Now, I will say he's got Jamison Williams over Garrett Wilson, which is kind of an interesting one. We'll have to kind of keep 
keep that in the back of the mind there. Jamison Williams, though, has been remarkable. Had an unbelievable game versus Georgia. I mean, he's blowing by these players in the secondary in Georgia. And these are not slow players, all right? Georgia's got a fast defense. They've got one of the best defenses, too, in the, you know all of college football. And Jamison Williams making it look easy, racking up nearly 200 yards. And just, again, the speed, speed, the speed with Jamison Williams kills. And he's not just a speed receiver. He might be the, the number one receiver taken in the draft. I still think Garrett Wilson's probably the best receiver, but Jamison Williams is going to be putting up an argument. Philadelphia going Tyler Lindenbaum. Wow, I like it. To replace Jason Kelsey for the... Got Landon Dickerson over there as well in that interior. You can keep him at guard and roll with Tyler Lindenbaum as your future center. So I have no problem with doing something like that. Build up those trenches even more. I know Eagles and Howie Roseman, they love to do it. And I like doing it, man. I think it's so smart. And their offensive line is really helping this team out a ton this season. And it's been a big time strength. So keep it a strength. Go get Tyler Lindenbaum. He's just that good. Now, ho, oh, they get the big man, Jordan Davis, six foot six, 350 pounds. He's a monster and an absolute problem on that defensive line there for Georgia. And you see him, his presence. So I'm looking at this one and you're thinking like him, you, you got to look at, they're looking probably towards the future here with Milton Williams and Jordan Davis is how Mike Renner's looking at this one. It'd be a good one-two combination of size and speed and uh, you know, he can obviously can learn from Fletcher Cox, one of the best bow rushers of the past decade. I absolutely agree with that. Don't know if it's their biggest area need on this roster, but it is something that they could be looking at. And, you know, you can get someone here at 13 overall is a little rich for Jordan Davis. I don't know. He definitely has a big presence on the football field. I'm kind of indecisive on whether or not Jordan Davis to take him at 13 overall. It's one of those things. But, hey, never bad to beef up the trenches there and really solidify that group. They probably need to look at the edge position with the next pick. On to the Denver Broncos pick here at 14. They're going with Devin Lloyd. Wow. I mean... Alexander, Alexander Johnson's a good linebacker. You got Josie Jewell. I think Baron Browning is coming along, and I, I do like him for the future of the team at linebacker. So I don't actually think that linebacker is their biggest need. Now, that's no discredit to Devin Lloyd, who's been an absolute animal. Coming off another great game here from the Oregon game, this must be the pick that he had. Watch him come out. Yeah, this is one where he great instincts and just jumps on the route and shows off the speed, too. Like, he's got better speed than you think he does. You know, he's not slow by any means. I mean, he's not Micah Parsons level, but he's got good, some good speed, man. Don't count this guy out. He's he's fast. He's He's got some good athleticism. Just a really, really translatable, good all-around NFL linebacker with Devin Lloyd here. I think he's a eight-plus guy. Um, so I, I get it, but at the same time, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if they're the biggest area of need. On to the Vegas Raiders, who are also going to linebacker, back-to-back -back linebacker, N'Kobe Dean, the Georgia linebacker now. Now, this is another one where we look at and you say they've got a lot of different linebackers there for the Raiders, but a lot, you know, are more aging veterans and whatnot with Wright, with um, Corey Littleton. Uh, who else do they have? they got some other guys, Nicholas Morrow, like on a one-year deal. I'm going blank. I'm, I'm missing someone else, but they've got some guy, Nick Wachowski. They've got some guys there, but they probably do need an influx of youth. I don't know if it's their biggest area of need on that roster. They need offensive line desperately. They could even use another receiver. Garrett Wilson still being on the board. N'Kobe Dean is a beast, but I, I don't know. It's not maybe my biggest area that I would go for the Raiders. That's just kind of my view on it. Cleveland Browns going, here's the Garrett Wilson pick. Wilson is fingered the reg regular season on a tear, recording 371 yards and six scores in the final three games. Yeah, he, he's been a problem all season long, but he's really taken his game to the next level. So Garrett Wilson going to be the pick for the Cleveland Browns. No explanation needed. They need a receiver. Philadelphia Eagles going with David Ajabo here. Okay, now they completed the defensive line. I love this pickup. So you have David Ajabo, Jordan Davis on that interior or on that offense or that defensive line. Plus you get Tyler Lindebaum. That's a pretty good three group of picks. I think it's decent at least. Because um, we talked about that cornerback position may not be as big of an area of need since you picked up Kerry Benson, Tay Gowan. Hopefully one of those guys can work out. Plus you got Zach McPherson as well. But anyway, let's go ahead and go on to the Blitzburg Steelers. And they're going with Samuel Howe, the quarterback from North Carolina. This is a pretty obvious one. You got to get your replacement for Ben Roethlisberger. Probably his last season, at least by the looks of it and by the hearings of it. Get Sam Howell at this point. I mean, he's worth a selection at 18 overall. I know he's not had the greatest season, but I still think he is an elite level prospect to take, especially in this mid-tier range. He's got that deep ball for days. If he gets selected, go and draft Chase, play Claypool. In your fantasy leagues, I think he'd tear it up. I think he'd be an instant connection right there. I think it'd be a really great connection to watch for the next four or five seasons. Sam Howell, the quarterback at a UNC. Miami Dolphins going Traylon Burr. Wow, a receiver out of Arkansas. Now, I don't think it's their biggest area need for Miami. And I've seen this more and more, like Miami people taking receiver for them. 
Devontae Parker, I know, has been injured quite a bit. I don't think he's a bad receiver. I don't know the contract situation. I believe he's under contract. He's still for another season or two. Um, the money-wise, is a little expensive. I don't know if they can get out of the deal. Traylon Burks is ridiculous. I mean, he's a great prospect. You see him. This is the toe tap, I think, or whatever. I think he got, like, let me see this one. Yeah, the great Oh, my goodness. That is insane how he got the toe down. But going back to the pick, they've, like, literally been, like, Jalen Waddles, their entire offense right now. And Mike Gusecki, like, those two have been their entire offense. They just throw off, dunk, uh, you know, screen passes to Jalen, like, please, our offensive line's so bad. Just go make plays. That's kind of what they do. And Jalen Waddles, a, a monster within its own right. But, oh, my gosh, dude, that is a great catch. But I think Mike Gusecki also is a really good option, too. Like, he's really, really good. for the. I think he's still one of the most underrated tight ends in the National Football League. He's so good, man. He really is. He's really, really good. And I think you kind of, you know, have an underrated weapon there. So him and Jalen Waddle, I don't know if this is a necessary pick. I think Iki Aquamu is still on the board. You got to, you know, maybe look at offensive line some more and definitely going to have to address it in free agency too. But that's kind of my view on the Miami Dolphins. And speaking of Akim Aquamu, here he is, Washington football team going with their franchise left tackle for the future. Charles Leno on a one-year deal. Same thing with Cornelius Lucas. I do think they'll bring back at least one of the guys and you can always look at some things in free agency. You got Sadiq Charles. I think he's probably going to play guard and probably take over for, um, uh, what's his name, Brandon Sheriff. Potentially, at least. We'll have to wait and see how that all rolls out. You got Sam Cosby, of course, at that right tackle position secured for the future. Iki Aquamo, I don't hate it. They need quarterback, probably, whether or not you're on the side of Taylor Heineke or whatnot. But Iki Aquamo gives it a good pick. I mean, heck, at 20 overall, I mean, that's that's a steal of a pick. On to the Cincinnati Bengals going to Andrew Booth, the corner here. We see a slew of corners. Trent McDuffie for the Raiders. Both good picks. I think the Bengals could use a number two corner. Andrew Booth, absolutely. The movement skills, heck yeah. I mean, he has been on fire too in these past couple games. South Carolina having, what, two picks in that game and a couple of pass breakups. He's been an animal lately. And I think he's, you know, he's still my second corner. I, I think he's one of the potentially the best corners in this draft class when it's all said and done. Him and Derek Stingley are my favorite two corners right now. There's some good ones, man. Sauce Gardner is really good too. Trent McDuffie is really good going to the Chargers, getting another corner to be that dude next to Asante Samuel for the future. Have no problem with that one as well. And the way they utilize the secondary, he'd be a perfect fit. So, you know, again, it's one of those things. Is it their biggest need? Yeah, maybe actually. It's a pretty big need. I think they could go and get another corner. The Buffalo Bills going Kenyon Green, the machine over here, offensive line prospect from Texas A&M, helping to improve that offensive line, which has definitely been underperforming. And they haven't been able, and you saw in the Patriots game, like they just haven't been able to run the ball well enough. And it hasn't been their identity. Their identity, of course, is Josh Allen throwing the ball, Stephon Diggs, you name it. So you could always add in more weapons if you want to keep going that route. But I like them to be able to go offensive line and be able to be more two-dimensional and be able to run the ball a little bit more. Kenyon Green would definitely be able to serve that purpose. Really good run blocker. Detroit Lions going Drake London. No surprise here. Drake London. They need a receiver badly. Now, whether it's Drake London, whether it's Trey Burks or whoever you know you have in your mind, I think Drake London would be a great selection. Plus, you pair him up with Ahmad Ra St. Brown, the wing dragon of Ahmad Ra. To be a compliment here, I think it'd be a good one to punch and, you know, Quantas Cephas. You still need more receiver help going forward. You probably need to sign someone to in free agency, but we'll see how far that uh, Drake London will fall with the injury. I think they need receivers. So that's pretty explanationary. They're pretty easy to understand. Dallas Cowboys going with Kyrie Elam, the corner out of Florida. Now, this is one where Kyrie Elam falling to 25 to the Cowboys. This makes a ton of sense. Opposite of Trayvon Diggs for the future, this would be... I love the combination of Trayvon Diggs and Kyir Elam. So Diggs and Elam as the, plus he got great names, Diggs and Elam. Like, dude, Elam and Diggs, that is a great combination of corners. Like, it just makes a ton of sense too, like in the way that they're going to schematically work with these guys, their skill sets. I love this pickup. Actually, this makes a lot of sense. I am, I'm loving this pick. This is one of my favorite picks of the draft, actually. I do think this is a great pick. To the Kansas City Chiefs now, and they're going with the sass. Ahmad Gardner, the Cincinnati corner. He's been dominant this year. I like this one, even though, you know, you talk about that edge position, but Javarius Ward, of course, being a free agent, they go ahead and solidify that cornerback unit with Rashad Fenton and Legereus Sneed. That'd be a good one, two, or one, one, two, three punch. I think that's a great combination of corners to have. And Ahmad Gardner at 26 overall, I mean, come on, man. That's, that's a steal of a pick. So you could say, hey, Ahmad Gardner, too good not to take over one of these edge rushers. Maybe they address it in free agency. There's different possibilities, of course. There's not just one answer at any sort of team or whatnot. You got free agency. Ahmad Gardner is such a good player. I definitely would consider him at 26. Heck yeah. Baltimore is going to be going to Jaquan Brisker, the safety out of Penn State. 
he's been an animal. And you could lose the Joker, you know, Deshaun Elliott being a free agent this year. I, I think they'll bring him back, and you still got Chuck Clark, of course. But if nothing else, hey, Jaquan Brisker is going to help your secondary group, whether you believe in Brandon Stevens or not. He's had an up-and-down rookie season. He's had some good games and some bad ones, but Jaquan Brisker would be able to come in there and be a great day one impact. Tampa Bay Buccaneers going Chris Olave, the receiver out of Ohio State, and Hey, I mean, who knows with Chris Godwin and Antonio Brown? I don't know how this is. How would they bring Antonio Brown back? I feel bad for the guy, and we talked about that, man. I feel bad for him, but hopefully it will be all working out there. Chris Olave will be another weapon to add for Tom Brady because you know he's going to be here for the next 10 seasons. Chris Olave would be able to bring that deep threat next to uh, Mike Evans and you know be a rep- good replacement if they did lose Chris Godwin, which I don't think they will, but you never do know. Uh, Tennessee Titans are going to go with Drake Jackson, the edge rusher here from USC. And they've been trying to address it, man. Bud Dupree just hasn't really worked out and lived up to the contract, at least not yet. And Harold Landry is also a free agent, too. So, I mean, looking at the edge position is kind of the obvious selection here for the Titans they desperately needed. They also could use some interior help in general. DeMarvin Leal's still available, too. So, I mean, you could look at DeMarvin Leal at this spot. would be a really good option. I think, actually, that might be the area to go. Even though Drake Jackson might fit them a little bit. I don't know. You could move Leal in and out. That's a tough one. It's kind of... He's what it, I think Leal's a better prospect long-term, but Drake Jackson does have a ton of upside, too. Green Bay Packers going Bernhard Raymond. I love it. I love it. I love it. Bernhard Raymond's one of my favorite players in this draft class. I think he's still being super underrated. Bernhard Raymond over to right tackle. Now, Elton Jenkins can play anywhere, man. He can play at center. He could play at left guard, right guard, right tackle, you know, left tackle, tight end, receiver. Who knows, okay? Hopefully he comes back healthy and ready to go. But you get some more offensive line depth. They've been kind of decimaled with injuries over the past couple of seasons on that offensive line. Bernhard Raymond, he's so athletic. And he's his movement skills are so good in his hand placement. Just got to be put a little more strength on, which I think he'll do when, you know, they get into the NFL and they give him those big protein shakes and all that jazz, right? They give him the... The big peanut butter jelly sandwiches as Vach Lombardi would always say. I love that. New England Patriots going Roger McCreary. This makes a ton of sense. Press man pedigree. Absolutely. He would fit right into this New England defense. And that's another thing. Like get another corner next to JC Jackson. You got Jonathan Jones in the slot. I think that's a really good combination. I do think they'll bring back JC Jackson, but you never know. Roger McCreary fit right in though. They need some more secondary help. And Roger McCreary has been absolutely insane for Auburn fits the bill for Bill Belichick and this defense. Arizona, here's the Marvin Lee Hall. I was wondering where he was going to go. I'm like, where is the Marvin Lee Hall? This dude's been dropping and dropping, slipping and slipping and sliding. Finally off the board of the Arizona Cardinals, who luck into a great pick, in my opinion. This would be a slam dunk pick to be able to replace, uh, you know, maybe Zach Allen. I don't know however you want to look at it. You can play in inside and out. I think he's got the versatility, of course, but Nonetheless, to Marvin Leal, I think is an absolute monster of a machine here in long term. To be able to get him at 32, I think he's Cam Jordan at 2.0, potentially. Lose a little bit of weight, maybe get down to 275. Do what Aiden Hutchinson did, you know, slim down your body, get a little more twitchy, a little more athletic, and he's going to be an animal off the edge. His speed to power combination and athleticism is going to be a problem for NFL opposing tackles to be able to have to deal with. That's going to be the draft, though, for Mike Renner and his, uh, his first-round mock draft that he's just updated and uh, whatnot. So I think it's pretty good, man. I love the Kyrie Elam pick to the Dallas Cowboys. I think the Diggs-Elam combination would be really good. Obviously, Bernhard Raymond. I don't necessarily think it's the Green Bay Packers' biggest need, but they like to address the trenches here and get some more depth, and their offensive line's kind of been battered up. They need interior offensive line help. They would be a team that absolutely could use a really good guard. Like Kenyon Green would be a great pick, I think, for them, but... Other than that, any other picks that I would say that, um, you know, were kind of out there? Again, Washington, Iki Aquamu is not necessarily their biggest picks. And, oh my gosh, Malik Willis didn't even go. Wow. So Mike Renner must be really low on Malik Willis. So we've got totally different wavelengths there. I'm a lot higher on Malik Willis. I think he's still the best quarterback in this draft class. I would have taken him here for the Washington football team, but that's kind of my view on it. You know what I mean? Iki Aquamu, though, is a really good prospect. I just would have taken a chance on Malik Willis at 20 overall. Heck yeah, man. I'd take him at number one overall. <laughs> uh, Sam Howell for the Steelers. That's a good one, man. Other than David Ajabo, I like that pick a lot. Garrett Wilson, of course, makes a ton of sense. I wasn't a huge fan of the Denver Broncos pick with Devin Lloyd. Same thing with the Raiders. I mean, I don't know. I, I, they're not the biggest needs for the team. I could see the Eagles looking at linebacker more, even though, I mean, they. I don't know if Howie Roseman is that guy. He doesn't like draft the linebackers in the first two rounds ever. But that is really it. Car- Matt Car- Matt Carell goes to Carolina. And yeah, that's going to be Mike Renner's mock draft here, his updated one that he just came out with on the 6th, which was yesterday. 
Uh, that is going to do it, though, for Mock Talk and Mock Mock. Not Mock the Mock. I hope everyone has a really good day, though. Uh, my name is Juice I'm doing my thing. And I'll talk to you later.